back ladies and gentlemen amazing 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 nice to see all of you i celebrate you i love you i appreciate you guys you've been such a constant support to me and to my channel and to my ministry and you and i thank you so much for listening to my messages because i have gotten very 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 powerful comments uh with people appreciating the impact of these messages and people just reflecting and trying to figure out oh my god how can i be a better person how can be a how can i be um a, 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 a more relevant person in the era and in the times i'm living in and that's why i love these conversations because guess what ladies and gentlemen these are conversations about our everyday life it's about adapting to the changes that are happening to us. It's about learning what is going on so that we don't become um, a thing of the past. Right? You understand what I mean? Sometimes you can become irrelevant. And none of us should become irrelevant. We were not created by God to become irrelevant. We were created by God to have an impact here on earth. And therefore, everybody has a gift and a talent which I personally believe they should be able to use it to the advantage and advancement of humankind. So feel free to share your ideas. Feel free to give me feedback. Let me know what these messages mean to you. And once again, please remember to subscribe to my channel, like and share these videos because guess what? We all need each other. Now today I'm going to talk about a story that uh, I'm going to go into the books of wisdom. <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about a story that is found in the Bible. And I normally like to say this is a not, not a religious conversation. Because some of these lessons and why they're documented in these books of wisdom is because these are lessons that all of us should be able to apply in our, in our lives. They are lessons that can teach all of us how to navigate life issues. Because many times we will find ourselves in the shoes of the people who went ahead of us. And a lot of the documented history in all the holy books... It's about people who went ahead of us, the experiences they had and how uh, they navigated through those experiences. And most importantly, what lessons they learned, which we can now apply in our own lives. So the story I want to talk about is about a guy called Daniel. And that is found in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. And Daniel was a child who was born in the... He was a privileged child, literally. He was born in the high society in Israel. But it so happened that when he was a young boy, uh, they were captured and taken into captivity in Babylon. So this story that I'm about to talk about, resolves about revolves around what happened when they were in captivity in Babylon. And uh, so it goes that uh, when they went to Babylon, the king uh, requested his people to pick out the intelligent children who understood maybe how the governments were run or how to relate with the high uh, people in society. And Daniel happens to be one of these people who is had picked and taken into the king's service. But Daniel, uh, with some other guys who are mentioned in the Bible, did something that was remarkable for all of us. The one thing that he did not do, even as he adapted into the culture of the Babylonians and he lived in their society and he did what he did and served in the capacity of being the king's uh, cupbearer and all that stuff. One thing Daniel never did, he never wavered from his faith. He maintained the faith of his forefathers. And of course we know uh, the, the, the faith of the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all that stuff. Now... So he had this habit of always praying to his God three times in a day. And he did that religiously. And we all know that Daniel was gifted with a lot of wisdom and a lot of favor. I mean, he had such an excellent working relationship with the, with the, with the, with the king of Babylon. And he, I mean, he, basically Daniel lived an amazing life. In fact, I think he survived three uh, kings of Babylon. And in all of those uh, times he held such a high position. Now, because he had developed a culture of calling upon his God and he prayed three days in a, in a day without fail, ha, guess what happened? That issue stirred up jealousy. It stirred up hatred, anger, everything you think can be provoked in a human being. And the very same guys that 
Daniel was working with that knew him very well and he interacted with every day and they knew what he did and how he did it became his enemies. They chose to become Daniel's enemies. And so they plotted um, a, a, a scheme, a, a sinister scheme. And they went and told the king that he needed to issue a decree that nobody in the entire kingdom was allowed to pray to any other god than the king himself. I mean, the king, these were his advisors, these were the guys he listened to. So the king thought, hmm, this is a nice idea. And so he issued a decree, and guess what? He removes the, the ring, the signet ring, and he puts his stamp on it, and you know. Just like blockchain technology, by the way. When you put a stamp, it can't be changed. Anyway, that was the law of those days. When the king put his signet ring as a signature, that item became law, and even him, he could not just uh, reverse it, right? So the king issued this decree that from that day, nobody was allowed to pray to any other god except to him, and he made a statue where people are supposed to worship. Now, I want you to remember, all this is being done by Daniel's friends, and the reason why they are doing this is because they are jealous of Daniel. And why was Dan Daniel so successful? Me, I want to believe the reason why Daniel was so successful is he was faithful to his God. And he did what he was asked to do. He did it faithfully. He did not, we are not told that he had malice. He was jealous. I mean, he did have issues. He just executed his responsibilities faithfully. And part of that, his faithfulness, was to his God. Now, can you imagine a decree is issued by the king? whom you relate with on a personal level, that nobody is supposed to worship any other God, knowing the God you worship, knowing very well that you can differentiate between worshiping God and worshiping an idol. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I'm, I, sometimes I look at life and I'm like, today, the idols that people worship are everywhere. They, are, they worship people, they worship resources, they worship things. Anyway, that's just by the way, the point is, Daniel found himself alone by himself because he cannot worship an idol. His faith, his heart, his mind knows he cannot bow before any other God except the God of heaven. And here has the king issued a decree and all his friends are now watching. They are watching. Now this is a moment to let, him, to let him know who they are. So, Daniel decides to stand by himself. And that is a topic for the day. Stand by yourself if you have to. Stand alone if you have to. So anyway, Daniel continues to worship. And of course, the guys who set him up know. Ah, oh, we even know the hour he goes to worship. So, to get him, to catch him is easy. So as Daniel goes to worship, the guys follow him. And of course they find him, now kneeling before his God, praying. And they go and report to the king and say, King, leave, leave, uh, uh, hail the king, may you live forever. Didn't you issue a decree saying that nobody for this period of time should worship any other God? Hail the king, didn't you issue that decree? Remember, this is their scheme. It was not really the king, it's them. And the king said, yes, I did. And they tell him, oh, mighty king, you will not believe what has happened. There are people here who have not obeyed you and they are worshipping their God. They are still worshipping their God and they are not worshipping you. They are not following the law. And the king was aggrieved. He's like, who the hell is that? So anyway, the guys eventually bring Dave Daniel before the king. And the king can't believe the person who is being accused of not obeying. This is his personal friend, Daniel. Now, when the king issued that decree, he had made a pronounced a judgment and said, whoever does that will be thrown in the lion's den. So now his best friend has been brought, he's the one who has not been obeying the law, and the king is so disturbed and he's asking him, surely not you, Daniel, how could you? How could you, Daniel? You are my friend, how could you do this? What do you want me to do? And Daniel was unapologetic. He was like, yeah, I pray 
to my God, I cannot pray to an idol. I pray to my God. And so the king had to execute the judgment because it was documented. So the, Daniel is prepared and we all know the story and Daniel is thrown in the lion's den. But before the king, through Daniel, he said something very profound. He told Daniel, may your God rescue you. Can you imagine? This is a king who does not even believe in the God of Daniel. But he can tell there is something about this guy that even him, he cannot stand. So he tells him as he's throwing him in the lion's den, he tells him, Daniel, may your God preserve you. And we all know how that story goes. Daniel survives the onslaught. The lions don't touch him. In fact, the king goes back, tries to sleep, he can. He wakes up at night, very early in the morning, and he goes and cries out and he goes, Daniel, are you still alive? Did your God preserve you? Because he cannot believe that Daniel could have done what these people are accusing him. And Daniel responds and says, yes, leave the care, leave the king. I am alive, I'm right here. Yes, I'm not even mad. The king was like, open, remove this stone, remove it. And they removed Daniel, intact, safe, not even a scratch. And this story, of course, we know how the story ends. And the king gets to know this was a scam plotted deliberately to destroy Daniel. And of course, the people who had plotted, the story turns against him, them, and they are thrown in the lion's den. And the Bible tells us, even before they landed, they were torn into pieces by those lions. So my story is, it doesn't matter who tears you down. It doesn't matter who plots what. Every one of us has a God-given assignment. We have a responsibility. We were created by God and brought down here to fulfill. And sometimes you may just be doing what you're supposed to do. And you may surround yourself with people because in the course of doing what you're doing, you find yourself among people. And you're thinking these people are your partners and things are looking okay and you're working well with them and everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing. But you don't know that behind you, they're scheming and plotting how to destroy you. And they will even go ahead and execute their plots and their plans. But let me tell you, you must stand alone if you have to. Continue doing what God called you to do because God did not call you to do their assignment. He called you to do your assignment. Continue doing your assignment irrespective of the challenges. Even when they betray you, continue doing your assignment. Execute your assignment without looking back. They will even destroy you. They will even throw you in the pit of the lion because they will manipulate everything to work in their favor without knowing that that is only a temporary victory. But if you are faithful to the assignment God has given you, if you are a faithful person to your calling, and if you are doing it with a clean heart, with the right intentions, don't you worry. Because there are so many people today who have been hurt by the very people they have helped, the very people they have worked along, by the very people who came into their life. And, and, and you, I mean, they just came into your life. But they turn behind you. They turn behind your back to destroy you because they think they are supposed to control you. When your assignment is clear, go ahead and execute your assignment. If you have to stand alone like Daniel, stand alone. Because guess what? The Bible also says in Psalms chapter 23, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So there has to be enemies for the table to be prepared. And guess what? Many times you don't have to look for enemies. They come and they choose to become your enemy. I am so encouraged by that story. Every time I think about it, I remind myself, Nyambura, you have to stand alone if that is what it calls for. You can choose to idolize whoever. You can choose to worship whatever you want to. But I, Nyambura, I will worship my God and I will remain true and faithful 
to my calling because I know even when I'm in that lion's den, my God will be with me. So for as long as I'm within my course and I'm doing what he created me to do, my God will be with me. I pray and hope all of us, all of us who are going to listen to this message, we can choose to stand like Daniel alone if we have to. God bless you. Remember, I am well, your trainer in the space of blockchain technology. I train corporate entities, corporate organizations, and I also uh, train individuals so that we can be able to take advantage of these opportunities that are presented before us by God and by the systems, and we can be able to exploit them and use them in our favor. Because anyway, the technology is here and the technology is going to catch up with us. With that, God bless you. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment, like and share this video so that it can reach as many people as possible. And also remember, this is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. Let's talk to each other. God bless you.